Thank you so much. Thank you. How can I live up to that introduction? Oh my God. Uh, thanks for coming out. It's my first time in Switzerland. Thanks for having me. You're not gonna share your own country? All right, that's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> it's a nice place. Love Switzerland. Love, uh, thanks for all the Swiss inventions over the years. Uh, in Malaysia, we had Ricola. We had uh, Swatch watches, right? You guys invented that clock without the numbers. Great job. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, moved to, uh, I moved to America last year. Um, for the first time, and I was really hoping to join that last bit of Obama's America. You know what I mean? I felt like I got there just in time for that final lap of Obama's presidency, and instead, I got there just in time for Donald Trump's America. That's like buying tickets to Beyonce, and instead, it's Donald Trump. <laughs> that guy is unstoppable. Let's look at this objectively for a second, okay? Regardless of your political affiliations, right? Hillary Clinton not helping. Goddamn private email server. Her fucking private email server every week. What the fuck is a 70-year-old grandmother doing with a private email server? Of course she fucked that up. My grandmother can't even get from TV to input one. <laughs> You gonna give her this black box in her living room? She was to figure that out for Blackberry. Just trying to send some emails. One day the FBI kicks down her door, just starts yelling at her. This scared old woman just trying to send emails. What do you think she's gonna do? She's gonna code the next upgrade. She's a 70 year old grandmother. Okay, you give her Gmail, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't get cute with this private email server. God damn it, Donald Trump can't make a mistake. Can't make a gaffe. Can't say anything wrong. Right? Says shit on a Tuesday morning that would get anyone fired from anything. But this guy becomes president. Can't make a gaffe. Like, this, like when Dan Quayle was vice president in America, this politician called Dan Quayle, when he was vice president, his presidential aspirations got derailed because one time he misspelled potato. <laughs> and that's how I told back in the day, that one time he just choked under pressure in the classroom. Everyone looking at him spelling T-O-E-5. And that was it. And he knew it, as soon as the ball left his hand, he knew it was the air ball, right? Just E, extra E there. And that was it, he had to go home. He had to go home, tail between his legs, forever, haunted by that memory. Every time he looked at french fries, right? <laughs> it's like, fuck, P-O-T-O, -O, no E! There was no E, so close! You know, this guy says what he wants, gets away with it. Why? Because Donald Trump leads with his flaws. So you can't attack him with it because he just owns his flaws. He takes the power away from his mistakes by owning it. He opens with his flaws. He's like Eminem from 8 Mile. <laughs> yeah, just be rabbiting the whole way. If you never watch 8 Mile, at the end of the movie, Eminem is battle rapping Papa Doc, okay? And Papa Doc has all this dirt on Eminem about his mom and his girlfriend, right? And Eminem has to like go up first, and he just opens with it, right? Just opens with his, sh with his shit, just owns his shit. Just goes on stage and goes, yo, everybody, yo, yo, everybody, yo, yo, uh, yo, 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 I'm racist, I think Mexicans are rapists, I build a wall, grab me by the pussy, make America great again, peace out, A-Town. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, but you're racist. And Donald Trump is like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of already said that. In fact, that was like the first thing I said, so. Remember when I came down the escalator? So that's all you got, let's move along here, because I don't know what to tell you, man, I got country to destroy, all right? This shit. <laughs> This is gonna destroy itself, got very strong foundations, gotta really put my back into it, right? No idea how he's gonna execute on his policy ideas. Right? How are you gonna do anything you just said? Like, don't get me wrong, all politicians talk a big game, right? But this guy takes it to the next level. How are you gonna do anything you just described? We're gonna build a wall and Mexico is gonna pay for it. <laughs> how? <laughs> Mexico is gonna pay for it, but believe me, believe me, I gotta pay, but believe me. It's like campaigning using the secret. <laughs> yeah, listen to a bunch of Tony Robbins tapes, right? The power of positive thinking every day. Send positive thoughts out into the universe. Just say that shit out loud a hundred times a day. Mexico's gonna pay for it. Mexico's gonna pay for it. Eventually, the universe just hands you what you want. You gotta be an optimist. I don't know. Um, I don't really know what it's like to be a minority Asian because I come from Asia. <laughs> In Asia, we're all Asian. That's just how we roll, right? <laughs> so I never encountered Asian stereotypes until I moved to like white people countries, all right? Like I had no idea white people were saying that shit about us. <laughs> this entire time just trash talking us, 
from behind our backs, right? From an ocean away, spreading all this misinformation, right? Move to America, learn all this shit about Asian people. Like, Asian people are good at math. I didn't know that. In Asia, we're all good at math. I didn't know that was a skill set. I didn't know square rooting seven was difficult. I just did it. Just did it again. In my head. That's how I entertain myself in between jokes. It's because it's moving so fast up here. <laughs> or the other one, Asian people are bad drivers. I didn't know that. In Asia, we get into cars, we drive, we crash, we get into another car, and we continue on. Right? That's how <laughs> you get from A to B. What are you talking about? You use one car the whole trip? <laughs> what a bunch of animals. Or the biggest stereotype, or should I say the smallest stereotype? Right? <laughs> You're gonna applaud that? All right, fine. Asian people have small dicks. I didn't know that. Nothing to compare it to. <laughs> Who the fuck measured enough dicks to get a large enough sample size to reduce your standard deviation down to an acceptable margin of error? That's what I wanted. <laughs> Sounds like a polling error to me. That's a little math joke designed to test the audience. That's all we do in Asia, math jokes. That's how we entertain ourselves. Go down to the math festival. Right? <laughs> Listen to some quadratic equations. I got news for you people, all right? I got news for you guys. There's more of me and my kind of race than any other race on the planet. You know what that means? That means we are the majority, okay? We dictate what is normal behavior. So all that shit, bad driving, small dicks, good at math. Even if that was true, guess what? That'll be fucking normal more of us doing it than anywhere else on the planet. We dictate what is normal behavior. I could drive down the goddamn street with my feet on the steering wheel, <laughs> dancing to Gundam stuff if I wanted to, all right? <laughs> and if all of us did it, guess what? That would become the correct way to drive. <laughs> and you guys, all right, eating your potatoes, wearing your filthy shoes in the house, and your big dicks, you guys are the weirdos. <laughs> you guys are the freaks. So um, I moved to New York, that's my first city I lived in. Yeah, some people applauding New York, yeah, it's cool. New York is a cool city. New York, I've lived in a lot of places. Before America, I lived in Australia for 10 years. Uh, before that, I lived in Singapore for 10 years. Before that, I lived in Malaysia, that's why I sound like this, all right? Um, New York is an interesting city. New York is the only city on the planet I've lived in where people fight trains and win. <laughs> like any other city on the planet, when the train doors start to close, that means that train is departed, okay? You're supposed to shut up and wait patiently for the next train. Oh, not in New York. In New York, if you can slip a piece of paper in between those doors, you always got a fighting chance. <laughs> Motherfuckers strolling up the closing doors, just uppercutting them in the glass panel, right? Like, that's your ticket right here. This train ain't leaving till I get on board. Boom, doors open. My first week in New York, I was in the subway, this crowded subway train, just taking a train. Right? The doors start closing, and as the doors close, this dude runs up to the closing doors, just jams his fingers right into the door. Right? No regard for his limbs or appendages. Like his need to get on this train exceeds his need to grip things <laughs> in the future. Like this is overrated. Right? Let's just get on this train and my life will be set. So he jams his finger right in there, creates enough of a gap, and just starts pulling right on the train doors. And at this point, you need like the jaws of life to get this done, because your gap is like this, and he's pulling, and he's pulling for like 20 seconds, and he gets tired, so he uses his head to like jam the door, <laughs> and he like readjusts his grip. He's like chalking up his hands, right? Just start pulling, and he's like fighting this train. <laughs> and I'm standing there, just facing the top of his head. And this train is going, yo man, just let it go. There's one in four minutes. <laughs> like if you let this train go, we'll all get to where we need to go to quicker. Also, I'm new in town. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to help you or if we're both gonna get arrested. Your hair smells great. Just let this go, man. But he's like, nope, this is the one. This is the one. And he fought the train for a minute. And he won. He won, the train tapped out, 
right? It was like, all right, go respect your ground game. <laughs> Anybody else want to come in here? It's not like a schedule to keep or anything. And that's the part of America right there. Too many civil liberties. So much freedom there. They took their Bill of Rights and really ran with it. That shit will never fly in Malaysia. Where I'm from, in Malaysia, you stick your arm in the door, the door's closed, you get dragged for like a mile, right? You get caught under the wheel, you get chopped in half, you start bleeding out on the tracks, right? The door's open, we all walk over your dead corpse. Yeah, that's what you get, you dumb fuck. No, in America. In America, one man can stop the entire train line because he doesn't want to wait four minutes. All right, hey, listen, you guys have been great. Thanks for listening to me. I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. <laughs>